Today we're gonna learn a super quick way to dodge and burn in Photoshop to add dimension to your portraits and here's the best part. Though this method is automatic, it creates a separate layer for dodging and burning. And you don't have to go ahead and manually dodge and burn with the brush, it does that automatically. And here's the best part, I already didn't say that, but here's the best part. You can go ahead and edit those dodging and burning layers. You can modify them, you can change them, you can do whatever you want with them, maybe deal with the colors. So it is auto, but it also gives you the power of manual. So pros and pros of both of them. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to download this photo, make sure to go ahead and check the links in the description. So let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the after and this is the before. You can see a radical difference in both of them. Now, apart from dodging and burning, I must tell you, I have applied a lot of other things to it. Curves, frequency separation, eye retouching, and we have videos on all of these topics already. So we're not gonna cover all of that. So let's have a look. So this is the before and then we corrected the skin tone using curves, okay? There's a video on that, you can check out the video right here or links are in the description to all of these topics. Then a little bit of frequency separation to soften the skin, just like that. And eye retouching just a little bit, look at the eyes, and then dodging and burning. And this is what we're gonna cover in this video. So this is the before and this is the after dodging and burning. As you can see how soft this is and this is all automatic and here's how to do it let's do it from scratch okay so let's delete dodging and burning group and first of all the first thing that you need to do is to create a curves adjustment layer really simple click on the adjustment layer icon and click on curves and just a quick little recap what is dodging and burning dodging and burning is brightening and darkening particular areas of the image to add dimension dodging is brightening burning is darkening right we burn things it becomes darker just remember remember it that way now <laughs> think of it like this think of it like a circle right a gray circle if you brighten a particular side of it and darken the other side of it what does that become it becomes a sphere right it has now a dimension so that's pretty much what dodging and burning is. More details in this video, links in the description. All right, now take the curves up just like this. And right now we are dodging, okay? We wanna brighten the areas which are already bright. So here's what we do. Double click on the right hand side of the layer to open up the layer styles dialog box, okay? Another way is right click and choose blending options. So two ways of doing the same thing. Double click on the right hand side of the layer. This opens up the layer styles dialog box. Now, take the slider of the underlying layer under the blend if section from left to right. There you go. What this does is that it deletes the dark areas, and listen to this carefully, it deletes the dark areas of the underlying layer, which means the layers which are beneath it. The combined effect of all the layers which are beneath it, it deletes those dark areas of the underlying layer from the current layer. So whatever areas that was dark in the underlying layers, those areas will be deleted from the current layer, which is a curves adjustment layer, okay? So take it like that. These areas will be brightened. So it seems nice to me. Now this is quite harsh, right? Hold older option click on this slider, it just separates those two sliders and you can make it smoother by taking these apart. The more apart they are, the more transition between the areas that are showing up and the areas that are hidden are is smoother, right? The more apart, the more transition between them is smoother, okay? Just like that, if you're satisfied. Okay, now once you're satisfied with this, looks pretty good okay once you're satisfied with this I'm, I'm gonna take it a little left click okay now you can stop here if you want you can decrease the opacity this is too much of course and you can stop here if you want but you don't have the creative ability to change the color of the highlights or maybe soften it all out there's only so much you can do you cannot add to it you cannot edit it right you cannot do all of that stuff so here's what I would suggest increase the opacity all the way to 100 it doesn't matter how that looks now create a merged layer how to do that hold ctrl alt shift and e 
Command, Option, Shift and E if you're using a Mac. Now this creates a merged layer of everything that you see on the canvas on the screen right now. Now I want you to turn both of these off, the curves off and this layer off and create a new layer and create a merged layer of everything without the dodging. Okay, Control, Alt, Shift and E. Okay, there we go. So this is the normal one and this is the one with the dodging. So let's bring the dodging up so that you can understand it well. So this is the normal, this is with the dodge. Now, how to have just the dodge on a separate layer? Any ideas, any guesses? You guessed it right, if you guessed it. If we, and listen to this carefully, if we subtract, okay, if we subtract the normal layer from the dodge layer, what will we have left? Just the dodge areas, right? Let's name it so that you can understand. So this is the dodge and this is the normal, right? Now, if you have the dodge layer and if you delete the normal from the dodge, what will you have left? Just the areas in which you dodged, right? And you can edit that to your heart's content. And here's how to do it. Normally we use this in frequency separation, but once you understand the concept, you can apply anything anywhere in Photoshop. So it's very essential in Photoshop to understand the concept than to understand the techniques or the steps. Okay, so go to image, then apply image. Now inside of apply image, let's select the layer which we want to subtract. So layer normal, we want to subtract the normal from the dodge. The dodge is already selected. Now. Let's select the blending option, subtract, very obvious, right? And make sure the channel is RGB. Now here comes the option to choose scale and offset. Okay, scale is the amount of subtraction. The maximum value of scale is two and the minimum value is one. It doesn't really matter in this case because you can always go ahead and decrease or increase the opacity. So let's choose the one which has the maximum effect. So if we choose one, we can see more of the bright areas, right? So let's choose one, That's, that looks fine. Now what is offset? Offset is the color of those areas, listen to this carefully, offset is the color of those areas with complete 100% subtraction. Now what do I mean by that? In normal layer, this area was white, even in dodge layer, this area is white. So the subtraction of both of them is what? Nil, right? Zero. So offset determines the color of those areas of which the subtraction is zero, subtraction is nil, okay? It's like same number minus the same number, it's just nothing, right? If the offset is 128, it means that those areas are filled with 50% gray. If the offset is 255, it means those areas are white, it turns the complete image white, so yeah, it kinda just messes things up. Keep the offset 128, it is 50% gray. If you keep it zero, it's black. Okay. 128 is fine. Now, why 128? Let's just check, check this off. I checked on auto, by mistake. Check off preserve transparency and check off mask. Make sure both are unchecked. Now, here's a very important thing to understand. The values of R, G, and B can be represented in numbers. The minimum value is zero and the maximum value is 255. So 128 lies in the middle. Now you might think 128 is not the half of 255. Now here's an important thing also. Consider zero. So there are in total 256 values. How? One to 255 plus zero, right? Zero is also a value. So in total, we have 256 values. So the half of 256 is what? 128. So we set the offset to 128, which means 50% gray. Now, why 50% gray? Because we're gonna use blend modes like overlay, soft light, which deletes everything, which is 50% gray. Hit OK once you're satisfied, and then delete the curves adjustment layer, we don't need it. Now, change the blend mode of this one to, as you have already guessed it, overlay. There you go, have a look at the before and after. So this is the after, and this is the before. And I don't think you need the normal layer. Now you can just edit it to your heart's content. You can just blur it out, you can add some effects, curves and all of that stuff. But before you do any of that, convert this to a smart object. Before you even you change the opacity, convert it into a smart object so that whatever you apply is non-destructive. So there you go, go to filter, convert for smart filters.
click OK and then this will be converted into a smart object. Next, you know this is a kind of too much so let's decrease the opacity a bit to maybe 70% that looks nice. Then you can blur it out. It's a little harsh. Have a look. It's a little harsh. So we can blur it out by going to filter, blur and then Gaussian blur. You can apply any amount of blur you want. 25 is fine for this. Click OK and there you go. Soft highlight really looks good. Have a look. So this is the before. This is the after. Let's have a look at just this layer. Change the layer blend mode to normal and have a look. Very soft. Now you can even desaturate it if you think the highlights are affecting the colors. So you can do that by going to image adjustments hue saturation and you can decrease the saturation of the same just like that and hit OK. Now you cannot see it completely because the opacity is 70%. Let's increase it and there you have the effect. Okay. Now change the blend mode again to overlay. Let's see the effect. So before, after. Now there are some areas in which you didn't want to apply the dodging. So you can mask those areas out. Really simple. You can create a mask by clicking on this mask button and then choose the brush. Make sure the foreground color is black and paint on the areas in which you didn't want dodging. So you can paint on these areas, these areas here, just like that. And there you go. You could also have created a negative mask and painted just the areas in which you wanted to dodge. So that can be done. Let's just delete the dodge mask and create a negative layer by holding the Alt or Option and clicking on the mask button and then take the brush and this time make sure the foreground color is white. Now what is the concept of layer masks? It's very simple. Black conceals, white reveals. White are the areas which shows the layer, black are the areas which hides the layer. Right now it's completely hiding the layer because whole of it is black. Now let's just zoom in and just paint on the areas in which we want to be dodged. Dodged. Okay, so simply paint on this area, maybe the nose and maybe the forehead a little bit. And there you go. In case you just wanted to paint on the areas in which you want to be dodged. So done. Isn't that fantastic? Now let's create a burning layer. Very similar to this one. So how to do that? Let's turn this off for a second and create a curves adjustment layer. Same process. Click on this one and with a burning layer, I'll show you some more features which I think are really, really cool. So let's take this curve down this time because we want to darken the areas which are already dark. So take it down just like this. Okay, that looks good. Now double click on the right hand side of the layer and do just the opposite. Take the slider of the underlying layer from right to left. This means that we are deleting the bright areas of the underlying layer from this layer. Okay, there you go, just like that if you're satisfied with this. Okay, that looks fine. Let's just make it smoother by holding the Alter option, clicking on this one and taking it a bit to the right and taking this to the left. Okay, now that looks good. Now once you're satisfied, click OK. Now do the same thing. Turn this off and we deleted the normal layer. We shouldn't have. Let's not delete it in the very beginning. So create a layer. And you can name that normal and if you want and let's just not do it. Turn it off, turn on the curves, create another layer and control alt shift and E. Command option shift and E. Then what we have to do, we have to subtract this from this. Okay, layer 2. Okay, image, apply image and then let's choose layer 2. RGB, subtract, everything is fine, looks fine, click OK. And there you have it ready. Now you can just delete it. This time you can delete it. You shouldn't have deleted the first time, but yeah, we did it. Now you can just delete the curves adjustment layer. You don't want that anymore. And just change the blend mode of this one to overlay. Let's turn this also on. Now this is too much. At this point, this is too much. But before you do anything, okay, before you do anything, convert this to a smart object. Let's change this back to normal and let's convert this into a smart object. How to do that? Go to filter, convert for smart filters, click OK. Now it's converted into a smart object. Now change the blend mode of this one to overlay. Doesn't look quite right, right? Let's change it to soft light. Wow, that looks wonderful, doesn't it? So have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Now you can also blur this out, blur this out by going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And 25, the same value is fine, click OK and you have 
this ready. Now, I'll show you some features which I think are really cool. You can change the color of the dark areas. If you think there's too much red in it, you can go to image, adjustments, and then curves. And this is a smart object. Everything you do is editable. So you can go to reds, choose the channel and choose reds, and you can decrease reds if you want, just like this. And have a look, we decreased the reds. Maybe you wanna make it more magenta-ish, so choose greens and decrease the greens, it makes it more magenta-ish. Or increase the greens if you want it to be less magenta-ish and more greenish. So I'll, I'll leave it at probably this and click OK once we're satisfied. And there you go. Now it has burned areas which we didn't want to burn, like the eyes, it has also darkened the eyes. Have a look at the before and after, so before, after. It has also darkened the hat and the hair. So how to hide that? Simple, create a mask, right? Create a mask, positive mask, and take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black by pressing X to toggle between the background and the foreground color. And then just paint in the areas in which you didn't want it to be burned. Let's do the hair. We painted a little extra. Press X to toggle between the black and the whites and just paint this area back in. And we didn't want this lips, so press X again to bring black back to the foreground color. Just like this. And the eyes. Now there are some areas just like under the eyes where you didn't want it to be darkened, so you can paint that as well. As I said, you can edit these layers. Okay, just like this. And you can just paint on the areas which you didn't want it to be dodged. So like this for example maybe this top of the nose for example so as I said this is completely editable right and you can also go ahead and decrease the saturation of this one if you think this is adding a lot of colors to this so you can go to image adjustments hue saturation hue saturation is grayed out why because the mask is selected so we need to select the layer and then go to image adjustments and then hue saturation now let's decrease the saturation just a little bit if we make it minus 100, doesn't make any difference. So let's keep it at minus 30-ish, that's fine. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. Now you can go ahead and decrease the opacity if you want. This is of course too much. Set it to maybe 50-ish, that's fine. And there you have it ready. Now you can make a group of both of these and you can name it burn. And hold the controller command, select the other one and then press control or command G. Now we have a group. You can name this Dodge and Burn. And there you have it. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. And in every way, you can edit this. You might ask how? Well, it's very simple. You can erase, you can add. How can you add? You can just rasterize this layer. So right now we are in this layer. We can rasterize that by right clicking on it and choose rasterize. Okay, but once you rasterize it, every effect is burnt into the layer. Now, you can just, let me just change back the blend mode to normal so that you can see and opacity to 100. Now, if you want to delete an area to be burnt, you can just paint gray in that area because gray is a color which will be removed once you apply soft light or overlay. So this is just for indication purposes to show how things will work. So you can set the foreground color to say 50% gray. Say so 808080 is the short code of that. Click OK, hex code, and the background color to black. Now, you can also desaturate this by going to image, adjustments, and desaturate. It doesn't really matter. Now, you can take black, decrease the flow to somewhere around one, or maybe two, to add to it. So if you want to darken this area, you can just simply paint with black on that area, just like that. And if you want to delete some areas, press X to set gray as the foreground color, and paint in this area just like this. Now once if I change the blend mode of this one to soft light, you'll be able to see that. So you didn't want this area to be darkened, so you will make sure the foreground color is gray and then just paint in that area. Maybe I'll just increase the flow to show you what exactly happens when you do that. There you go. That's how it works. If you want to delete this area. Wonderful. Now you can go ahead and infinitely edit this the way you want. If you want to darken an area, press X. Then you can just darken this area a little more, this area a little more, and there you have the idea. I think it's too much, but you get the idea. Similarly, you can do this with the Dodge layer. So that's how you can really go ahead and modify this with filters and brushes and go manual all in. Now, you can create actions for both of these layers by going to Windows and then 
actions and inside of action just hit the record button create a new action hit the record button and create that curves the blend if and you get the whole picture right so you can just in the click of a button create both of these layers and just have the ability to manually go ahead and adjust those sliders you can do that by just clicking on this box and i already talked about actions in this video just check this video out right here in which i create an action for skin softening so that you'll get an idea on how to create that action now at this point you might think this is too much so we'll go ahead and decrease the opacity to around say maybe 60%, that's fine. Let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the after, this is the before, and this is the after. Now we did this very quickly, and this is the final image before and after. So that's pretty much it for this video. That's how you can auto manually dodge and burn in Photoshop by applying curves and then blend if, and then the amazing method of subtraction. And that's all there is. Just remember, create a curves adjustment layer, bring it down, for burning, bring it up for dodging. And then create merge layers, one with the dodge and one normal, or one with normal and one with the burn. And subtract both of them, you will get just the dodging and the burning layer. Then you can change the blend mode and then apply whatever effect you want. You can mask it out, you can play with the brushes, and there's a lot of other things which you can do we, which we discussed in the video i hope this video was helpful and if this was make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating